Und Mohyeddin ibn Arabi was born in Andalusia, in a city called Morsha, which is not too far from Alicante on the Mediterranean in southern Spain. He was born in 558 Hijri and died in 638 Hijri. He lived for almost 80 years, which is about 800 years ago. He is considered a Shaykh al Akbar, al Arif al Akbar. By far, he is considered by his followers and his students to be the most prominent Sufi or mystic figure in the history of Islam. And therefore, he has inspired thousands and thousands over these centuries thousands and thousands of philosophers, scholars, theologians, Muslims and non-Muslims were inspired by his writings and his theories. He is a Sheikh al-Akbar. Ibn Arabi uh, lived in his birthplace in his town and then he moved to Granada, to Sevilla, in Andalusia, in southern Spain and then he crossed the Mediterranean to North Africa. He lived some time in North Africa, Algeria, Tunisia. Then he moved to Egypt, to Cairo. Then he moved to Iraq, to Mosul. Then after that to Hejaz, which is Mecca and Medina. Then he ended up in Syria, in Damascus, where he died. And he's buried, he has a grave in Jabal Qasyun. Jabal Qasyun is a very famous mountain that overlooks the city of Damascus. So he's buried there. It's very funny that this man, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, is considered by his fans as being a saint, Qaddis, Wali, one of the greatest friends of God or servants of God, the greatest ever. Whereas his opponents, they consider him to be evil, to be non-Muslim, to be a, an apostate, a heretic, because of his theory, philosophical theory. I will come to it soon. This man, at the age of 36, went to Mecca. While he was in Mecca, he met a Persian scholar, a prominent scholar from Bilad Faris, from Persia. And he met his daughter, her name is Nivam, and he fell in love with her. Because we, we've been told that this daughter, this uh, lady, Nivam, the Persian lady, was very attractive, physically was very beautiful and attractive, and also she possessed the inner beauty so God had endowed her with the inner beauty and the outer beauty. So he fell in love with her and she shaped his opinions and his theories. He was inspired by her. He was in a true love with this lady. And it is amazing how sometimes women or wives inspire their husbands they become a source of empowerment for their husbands. And sometimes, of course, a source of weakness or devastation. Same thing with, with, with husbands. Sometimes a husband, a man, can be a source of empowerment, a source of uh, success, progress for his wife. And sometimes, unfortunately, he, he can be a source of you know, devastation and suffering for his wife and for his family. So this man, he says, he was inspired by his wife and his wife was backing him, behind him. And one of the secrets of his success was this Persian lady, Nivan. 